Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. I am finally filming my October wrap-up, which went really really great. I read 34 books in October, kind of by accident, because I had put my TBR much lower than that, but then I finished super early just because I read a lot and then I just had to add a lot of other books, which I will of course talk about now. So October, I technically did Magical Readathon instead of in September. So I did all the challenges for my character and for the novice path. I ended up reading 10,147 pages, which is quite impressive, I think, and 34 books. I don't know why I've been like this lately, but I've been reading so, so, so much. It's really good, but it's also like, holy shit, I read a lot. So yeah, let's just get started. First, I will just show you the books I read for God of Thing for Season. My God of Thing for Season wrap up is probably coming like one or two videos after this. So look out for that. And then God of Thing for Winter will be up soon. I also have a vlog on my channel where I read all these. So there's that. So if you want to check it out, I will leave all the videos mentioned in this video down below. So first we have The Taking of Jake Livingston by Ryan Douglas. I have a Crew Kingdom by Winter Peckle. Cersei by Madeline Miller. And my personal never gets old by a bunch of different authors. This is a short story collection. So my thoughts on those books is a bit in my blog and then also will be in my wrap up. Yay, then we have those out of the way. And then for the first book I read in October, wasn't even for like Magical Readathon. It was just a book that I got a bit early. So I read it, so I can post a review. The review is up on my channel. It is Kingdom of the Curse by Carrie Maniscalco. This one is the sequel to Kingdom of the Wicked. And it basically follows, what's my character's name? Uh, Amelia, Amelia. And her sister dies and she tries to find out why her sister died. It's, she's a witch and there's also a wolf with the princess of hell. That's the first book. And then the second book we continue from that. I don't want to spoil it, of course, but overall, it was kind of disappointment like the first one. I didn't like the first one that much. And this one could have had such cool concepts, etc. It didn't. More thoughts in my review and I gave it two out of five stars. Right after that, I read Beast of Volume 9. Since I read so many books and I didn't almost have any manga, I managed to like, what's to say, go through all my rounds of manga and read again in the end of the month, Beast of Volume 10 as well. So I read two volumes of Beastars in one month, which I didn't realize until I was going to do this wrap up. And Beastars is basically a human drama, but they're all beasts or animals. And there is this whole conflict between like the prey and the predators that have a different name. I think it's easier to explain it while I have those names. And they basically follow a wolf named Nagoshi, who is actually a soft boy, but everyone thinks he's a bit scary because he's a big, big gray wolf. And it's just so many dynamics between all of them. Very interesting, I guess you could say, politics and, you know, not trying to murder each other. And it's just many, many, many elements to the story. And it's really, really complex and really interesting to see all, like, motivations, etc. It's a really good series and I'm enjoying myself. And I'm soon actually kind of caught up of how many is published in English. So that's fun. Taking some stuff together so we'll go faster. In last month, I did Sci-Fi September and I didn't get to finish my TBR when I was gonna read The Alley of Law. This one was my audiobook, I think, and I didn't finish it, so I finished it in the beginning of October. And this was a reread, absolutely loved it. This is kind of the first book in the Vax and Wayne series, which is the sequel to the first Miss Mon series. It's kind of more like steampunky, 300 years in the future. So I have to do with elements and everything from the first books, but of course a different kind of plot and characters because it's 300 years later it's kind of sad but it's also very interesting to see what Sanderson did to the world with so many years in between and I think he does a really good job of it and since we're just like here I also read Shadows of Self this I read for a challenge which was I'm gonna check it was the stop tower of rumination read a five star prediction so here's this one. I did give it five stars, so it was a correct prediction. And this one is kind of like the first book in a trilogy because this one was kind of unplanned, a lot of law. And then like Shadow of Self. And then there's Bounce of Mooring and there's gonna be one more. So that's like the official trilogy. All of Law is kind of like its own little standalone thing, but with the same characters. And here in Shadows of Self, I was really, really surprised to see how much it actually connected with the old days. It's not really a spoiler, but like I didn't expect it to be so intricate and it made me very emotional and I want to cry for like every single page because it was just so... I'm just so sad, but also so happy to continue in this world. So it was a really, really great ride. So yeah, five out of five stars for both of them. And soon, I think in December, I will probably read Bounce of Morning, so then I'm all caught up in Sirius. If you could hear that, that's my watch vibrating behind me. 
because he got a lot of notifications suddenly. I don't know, he does that. It's kind of weird. Then read Jujutsu Kaisen Volume 6 by Gayu Okutami. So this was the last volume of this I had. Um, but more is coming, maybe, because it's been so long for forever. This follows Itadori, who finds out he can, like, see and fight curses kind of demons and he's at this school to learn this, meet other people, they fight fight and solve different cases <laughs> kind of to like kill curses and also there's like certain people going after them because they don't like the Jujutsu sorcerers because you know they are after them. So yeah it's really really great right? Very fun. Now for more of like the magical readathon prompts. We were at the Norwood's Path entrance. That was to read a book with a map. And for that, I read Brightly Burned by Kirsten White. This is the final book in the Conqueror Saga, which is Lad and Pale retelling Bad Lad is a woman. And uh, this is the final book, as I said. And it was really, 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 really good. I truly had a great time with this series. I really thought that I wouldn't like it. And I'm sitting here with like this really nostalgic, good feeling that I finished it because I really had a good time. I really liked the setting, I liked all the characters, all wrapped up so nicely and how they cared so much for them and like everything that was happening was super interesting. First book is definitely slow because we go into like the childhood and spend many years until like they're more adults but I thought that that was so important to establish a relationship between these characters to know why they're doing what they're doing later on to show how much they mean to each other and how the relationship were built I think that was really important and I thought the second book couldn't be as good. It was, it was truly sad and this one in the beginning I was like very similar to the second book. I was like hmm how is this gonna like go and then it all just came together and I wanted to cry at work and it was truly good. So far with five stars and overall the series was really solid. Very happy I read it. So yeah really recommend. So now I was unsure if I was gonna go in the order I read them or the order the challenges are because I kind of like did both now at the same time. We can continue in the order of the challenges, it's fine. So then we had Ash Thorn Tree, which is a book that keeps tempting you. And for that, I read She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. This one was like my most anticipated read for like this whole year. And it's basically like a retelling of one of the biggest emperor in China, just that it's a woman. My voice is literally dying. Yeah. That was a really weird sound from the water bottle, but okay. It's also like an after retelling, but basically a main character takes the identity of a brother after he dies, and then like she kinda, I don't know, like takes his destiny in a way, but like she's still her, but like she never had a name and now she has his name. It's really, really, really interesting, really fun, very, a lot of, what's it called? Things happening, intricate things happening in each other. Overall, I enjoyed myself a lot. I'm really happy I actually liked it because I was scared I wouldn't. And I gave it four to five stars and I'm excited to see what happens in the sequel. And I'm glad I had a good time. I don't know. I tried to keep short, but also... <laughs> then we are at the Mist of Solitude. It was a read a standalone novel. And for that, I finally read The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. And this one just follows kind of this game, this magical game and at the circus, which is kind of a setting for the game. I don't really know what was up with like, that game. I don't really see the point of it. But it's a really beautiful story about the circus and these people finding each other. And it's really beautiful writing. And I didn't really get the romance <laughs> because they kind of just like, oh, we like each other. But I liked the book just because I thought it was beautifully written. I liked the concepts of it. I really felt like I was there in this beautiful place and I thought it was stunning. So even though like I wasn't convinced of everything, I still had a really good time. I don't know how to describe it. But yeah, not regarding I read it at all. But I do think I prefer Solacy over this almost because I thought that had like a different kind of beautifulness to it and certain parts aspects of the story I enjoyed more. But overall, I think it was good. Sorry I'm not going like super much into details, but like my brain is fussy right now because I read so many books. Okay, they all like there's so many. <laughs> and then we have The Rune of the Sky, which is a book featuring ghost haunted house or other supernatural elements. And for that, I read a book I cannot find because there's so many piles of books. 
I found it. And that is Bridge of Souls by Victoria Schwab. And this one is the third book. I don't know if it's the final one, but the third book in the Cassie Black series, which follows a 12 year old girl that can see ghosts and her ghost best friend is Jacob. I mean, I was gonna say she can see her ghost best friend, but you got the point. And she travels with her parents because they're filming this like supernatural show around a different city. So every book is set in a different city. Here we have New Orleans. And I do not think that the atmosphere here was as good as the other ones with like the setting and like what's what's happening like kind of the plot of this book this is quite different from those but since i love the characters so much it really worked for me even though like i do think that this is the weakest book in the series i think i ended up giving it like 3.5 out of 5 stars but still really really enjoyable series and i'm glad i read it and we will see if it comes more then we are at obsidian falls which was to read a thriller or a mystery book after that i read we were liars by e lockhart which is you know a really really hard book for many many years and i finally read it because someone told me it was written really well and i do think it was written really well i do think so but i do not think that this story was worth Earth, what everyone has been serving for many many years like I didn't hate it absolutely like I thought I would but also I didn't love it at all I do think it had interesting aspects to it and I really really enjoy reading about rich people I think it's so interesting in a way to see them fight about money like that's like the plot of every rich family is to fight about money and I just think that's hilarious I don't know why I think it's really interesting to see what rich people spend their money on I really like the island I was like oh, I'm gonna have a own island and we get to hear about all these different houses and I was like this is so stupid but I am interested in it because I thought it was funny to just like I guess just learn about how they were living and stuff <laughs> I don't know I think it's fun to read about, but like the plot twist, also I do agree it was a bit shocking, but mostly it was sad, but like it wasn't like, oh my god, now it's the most amazing book in the universe because of it, because I do think like this is so short and it doesn't get to like build it in like a consistent way, I think it doesn't fall as hard as you would want it to, at least not for me, the plot twist. But I do think the story had some beauty to it. But also, overall, we're thinking about we're walking around for like 200 pages and literally nothing happens. It's kind of stupid. But yeah, it's a bit sad, but a bit funny. I give it like 3 out of 5 stars, maybe. 2.5, I don't know. So like, overall, not hated, but still don't see the hype even after reading it. Next stop was Tower of Rumination, which we already talked about. And then the last stop on the novice path was William Academy arc, book with a school setting. And for that, I read uh, Lesson in Vengeance, which I also talked about in my favorite, so I'll try to be a bit shorter here, which basically is a dark academy, a standalone fantasy, and we follow Felicity, yes, and she's back at the school after being gone for a little while after her best friend slash girlfriend died and then she meets this new girl there called Alice and they're like really looking into like these witch murders that are happening and also our main character Felicity is very interested in like magic and think it's real or is it real we don't know and it gets dark and twisty and turny and we're asking us questions but a lot of stops finding out a lot of secrets about these main characters very very intricate and like beautiful and I had a really really good time it was very good I think the atmosphere here was immaculate and how like just everything came together and also like just learning about the different characters very good so I gave it like four to five stars could almost have been five but like four to five stars I think is good and I kind of want to reread it already so there's that then we were done with like my path so now we are on, like in the character prompts so first challenge is to read a book set in a city or town but that i read the camelot betrayal i love i said that before i could find a book i read the camelot betrayal by kirsten white and this one is the second book in a camelot rising series which is a trilogy it's a retelling of the arthurian legends and we follow grunnware's point of view instead of you know, usually Arthur or Merlin or something. And she's there to protect Arthur. And I don't know like how much to say, but that's basically like it. If you know about the Ethereum Legends, you get a general picture of the plot from that. Here we see many known characters from the old books. There's twists and turns and investigations and weddings and many, many different things happening. Well, I do think I like the first book more than this one. I still had a good time with it. And I'm excited to read the third book to see how the story wraps up. I think it has really, really fun emblems. But generally, since I like the Ethereum Legends, so much i feel like i would always enjoy any book like this no not any but kirsten white is a very solid author full belief in her so it's not weird that i had a good time four out 
of five stars. Maybe 3.5, it seems like I gave it because it was a bit weak up places, but still had good times. Then we have the challenge Dark Meadow, read A Dark Academia, another one. After that, I read Ace of Space. I don't know why I held it like that, by Farida Abike Imine, and this one is a standalone thriller contemporary, and we are set at this very privileged, rich academy where we follow only two black students there, and they have just been picked out to, like, be in a prefect council thingy for, like, the last year in school, but then they start getting, like, threatening slash revealing messages from someone called Aces and Aces is like trying to reveal all the darkest secrets so that you know people wouldn't like them and they're trying to find out like why is Aces doing this la 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 it's like pretty little liars I think meets gossip girl I think like that's a good way to describe it even though like they have familiar vibes but a bit like that this Expose much more darker themes, I think, than those shows. Like, you know, racism and privilege. Not just race privilege, but also, you know, money privilege. That's a word. <laughs> money privilege, richness privilege, I don't know. But yeah, it's, it goes into very, very interesting themes. Not interesting, but important themes is a word for it. But also at the same time being so, so, so good. Keeping it at the fish seat, wanting to know what's going on and why. And just following these two characters that you start to care really, really, really for. And uh, it's just such a great time. My characters are really great. It's also very, very queer book. Love that for me reading it and overall it ended up being so good and I heard everyone saying it was good and I was like but is it because do I believe it people know but it was it truly was and yeah four to five stars to this one could almost be five I think for this one too I think apparently I gave it I have written down I gave it five stars but I didn't remember that so apparently five stars I think it would be about like 4.5 maybe now but like five stars I said in my favorites, I didn't give everything five stars, but I did give this one that. It makes sense though, because I really enjoyed it. Sorry, sometimes star ratings just go over my head, apparently. <laughs> then for the last challenge for Magical Readathon, we have a Lithrian book with a crow on the cover or title or a red cover book. For this, I read The Wizards of Wands by Christina Colwell. This is the first book in the series following a like, uh, what's it called, magic hunter maybe? A warrior and a wizard and they like hated each other for centuries or a long time at least and they're fighting enemies and they're like oh and then I kind of have to help each other to like we different things I don't know how to describe it it's kind of like a venture thing like really really fun I listened to the audiobook while also reading the physical which I never do but that's because David Tennant reads the audiobook and he was so good and it's such a good fun just having a fun with its story I don't know how to describe it just like an adventure going all places I don't know has illustrations truly a good time with this I give it four out of five stars and I'm gonna read the sequel very soon now and this month so I'm happy about that now we need to jingle back jingle back that was a word to see all the things I skipped while only talking about Magical Readathon. My Hero Academia, Volume 29 by Kohoro Koshi. This one, now we are still in the battle, like it never ends. This has been the same battle in like, I think the last three volumes. And I'm like, I wanna know how it ends. But this one seriously had some shocking shit happening in it. I kind of wanted to cry, and then I screamed a bit by reading it. Cannot wait for the next volume, but very scared for it, but cannot wait for it. I don't know much more to say. We are like on volume 29. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Then I read Monstrous Volume 6, is it? This is a news volume, and this one is by Marjorie Liu and Sanaka Takeda. And basically we follow Mariko Hoffolf, and she goes around, there's a war brewing or starting or already started, I don't even know. And she kind of has like this monster god thing entity inside of her. Very interesting. Goes around trying to just save people and survive. And it's very like steampunk so that's fun. But yeah, very beautiful, very interesting. And it ended on a serious cliffhanger. So I need more, but it probably won't come in this edition at least till next fall. So there's that. <laughs> but I can wait. It's fine. It's all fine. Is it though? Who knows? Then Red Spice Family, Volume 6 by Tatsuyo Endo. And this one continues Spy Family. It is so good. So basically, it follows Master Spy Twilight. He needs to get a family for like this undercover operation. He gets a wife who is an assassin, a child who is a telepath. But he doesn't know that either of those are. The telepath know what they are, but they don't know that she knows because 
they don't know that she can read minds. It's a whole thing. Also get a dog that can see the future. I mean like, what more can you want? Anime is soon coming next year. Cannot wait. This is one of my favorite manga series right now. I'm having such a good time. Every single page is a serious blessing. So I recommend it so, so, so much. It's like when I get these volumes, it makes my day because it's so much fun. It's hilarious. It, hits the punch every time. Would recommend a billion percent. It's a lot of manga like going after one other because I read them in between every second book but now since I like read all the books at once, all the manga comes at once too but that's fine. So then we have Land of the Lustrous volume 2 and this is by Haruko Ichikawa. Finally continuing the series because I reread volume 1 last month so that I could finally read this. It's like been Many years since I read the first volume and watched the anime, but it still like covers like stuff in anime. And I thought that was very really weird to like read them again because like I said I read the first one before but never continued. I think it was weird to like finally continue. And yeah, it, it's a good time. I don't know how to describe the plot. They kind of own like this future place kind of and they're all made of like different crystals or like materials in the, on the outside. I don't know. And then like occasionally gets attacked by like these Lunarians that just want their pieces and stuff. It's very really sad but like it's just like the battle and then we have a main character trying to find her life meaning and fast and she's trying to find out what she can do for the island because she's kind of the weakest one. She's kind of yeah and we don't really know why and how and etc but I think we will get deep into the different secrets because we already went a bit deep here going on and I'm interested to finally continue the series. It's been a few years and I really do like it so I'm happy. So much manga after one another. Totally weird. We have Whisper Me a Love Song by Eiku Takeshima. This one is the volume two of the series and it basically follows these two girls and this girl sees that girl sing and then she falls in love but she says she's in love but not like love love more like I love you but not like I love you but then the other one actually falls in love with her and that's like a whole thing where like she wants them to be in love. It's like very very cute and adorable, very blushy, many many cute moments. It's just truly adorable parts. So I'm excited to continue this really really cute series, a bit like Given, but I think Given is more like serious and sad than this is. Maybe we'll see, maybe it will go to sadness later. But yeah, a good time. And now actually for some other books instead of manga because there were so many after one another, we had the whole Percy Jackson series, which is here by Rick Ryden. I read them all in like five days. I have a vlog on my channel and the reason I read them all was because in the end of the month I realized I was planning my TBR for the next month, which is believe on the one we are in now. And I wanted to like continue finally after many, 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 many years just reading the first series, continue Continuing with the other series in Professor Jackson universe, but I it was a few years since I read these, and I was like, do I remember them? And I was like, no. So let's reread the whole thing, and I had a really good time, and I was like, oh my god, I will barely make it, but I made it, and I even read more after it. So there's that. But yeah, basically to talk like just overall thoughts. I don't bother talking about every book because I kind of did that a bit in my vlog. It's an amazing series. It still is to this day. I think that what Rick Riordan did here was so so great and fun and I feel like the feeling you get this the whole venture and being important even though we have all these flaws and just being heroes and you know with all the great legends it's like a series I loved when I was a bit younger not like super young though but like younger than I am now. I still love them to this day and I always will and it's such a good time I always lost all of them but what I want to say it has just so fun adventures and reading them makes me happy what else do you need? I think they're all so solid. I had forgotten though, truly, how sad the last two books are. Truly sad. I was sitting there being like, wow, this is really sad. Didn't expect that, but yay. Not really much more to say, I think. I could talk all day and go much deeper into many things, but I think that's okay. I then even had more time left of the month, so I read a few more books, and these were my last books for the month. I even did like a poll on Twitter, being like, which one of these should I read? And I read in order of the ones that had the most votes. First we had Dark Rise 
by C.S. Picard, which is the new series by this author, it came out really recently and of course I had it pre-ordered and I actually read it. And this one truly was a ride, what to say. So it's been like this battle between dark and light for many, many years and the dark is now coming. The light is the only one that's been like stopping the darkness from coming back. And then we have Will who has a destiny, <laughs> what to say. I don't want to say more than that but I don't know how to describe it, but it kind of wanted to do a lot of tropes, you know? And I was like, okay, so the story's going in this direction. But then the author was like, no, 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 we are not. We are going in this direction. I was like, okay, I can vibe with this. I can expect that the author takes some twists and turns. And then it went in another direction again. And I think the author was really good at writing something that you're a bit familiar with and then like shocking you a bit. But it wasn't like, oh my God, out of this world, you've never seen it before. But it was so fun to cap you at the edge of your toes. I had three very specific things I did not expect to happen. I don't want to like talk about them because they're spoilers, but like, those three things carried the whole book and had such a good time because it was so fascinating. I thought like, as I said, the story would go in a certain direction, but it never did go exactly where I thought it would go, even though like I could guess a certain thing by the end, but then by that point, you had gotten many, many hints about it. I was like, oh my god, okay, the story standing stands in now, so uh, more things are gonna happen. And then it did, like, it didn't feel long, but so many things happened. But like, I don't know how to describe it, like it never stood still. I talked about this before on my channel, where like, I think the authors a lot of the time just like give half of the story in the first book and then like stretches it out for three books and it becomes very, very boring just because you would want maybe something to be resolved in the first book so that it doesn't become the same plot or like the same villain, I guess you can say, in all the books because then it's much more interesting to see what happens more kind of, I don't know how to describe it. And this one did that and I like that. It's not really a spoiler, but like it feels like a different kind of story now that I read the end than what I thought it would be in the beginning. Just because I was scared it would be like, oh my God, this is gonna be long and dragged out for this one conflict. But now it's different conflict kind of altogether. So yeah, now it's very interesting. I am very excited to see where we go. This was really long because I feel like it was very important for me to establish what I felt. But yeah, really good time, four to five stars. Really happy I enjoyed it and I'm excited for the next book. There was part I was like, this is a two star book. But then everything came together and I was like, okay, never mind. <laughs> so then we're at Saga Volume 4. I actually continued this series because I read one, two, and three many years ago, and then I reread them last month. And now I finally read Volume 4, so that's the thing. I did not expect the story to go where it went, by the way, again. Because I hadn't read it for years, and now it just totally went in a new direction. And I was like, whoa, did not expect. Very good time. Follows two star cross lovers from different species that's been in a war for many years. They get a baby, they're on a run. Yay. And I then read the book I was very excited for, which is Normal People by Sally Rooney. And I was very excited for this because I heard so, so many great things for a billion years. I even have the other book, Conversation with Friends, and here we are. And I didn't like it and I feel scammed because this was about nothing for me. It was about these two characters that fucked in high school and they meet again in college and they fuck again and they go off and on fucking, and then like there's different reasons for why they break up or not. The whole book was basically them just miscommunicating. That's a word, I can't say the word right now. Uh, yeah, but either way, they just couldn't talk to each other, and there was just so many misunderstandings. And I don't know, it was supposed to be like about beautiful, but normal people being flawed, I assume. But yeah, it was also written really weird, but then um, I got really used to it. So I did like the writing, what was happening, the characters, I was kind of mad throughout the whole thing. I'm very disappointed. I thought this was literally going to be a five star book and it ended up being like three stars. I don't know, I feel scammed because everyone said it was amazing and I thought it would be amazing, but it wasn't to me and I'm sad. So I done read Lord of the Turn of Night by Ben Anderson. This is the Face and Gate pick for the month of October. Based in case it's a book club I'm co-hosting where we read queer sci-fi and fantasy every single month. And the live show for this will be. I don't know when this video is going up though. But yeah, I haven't been yet, so I will leave a link down below. If it has, when I... Yeah, it's basically a standalone following a vampire and a mage. And the mage is going into the vampire's, I was gonna say like, house to like kill him. And then they do something else instead. I wonder what that could be. I was very excited for this because it's alone, a bit smutty and 
you know, a vampire. I was ready. I'm gonna save some of my thoughts for the live, basically. A huge disappointment because it just didn't make sense to me. Things did not make sense of how they went, where they went, of what was going on. And the Romans was, I don't know what was happening there. Overall, I ended up not rating it highly. Maybe like 2.5, 3 stars. So I am sad about it. But yeah, I'm gonna go into depth in the live if I remember what happened. But overall, a huge disappointment. I am very sad, that's all. I'm gonna leave it at that. The last book we're gonna talk about today, the last book book I read in this month, which was the one that got the third most awards on my Twitter poll, The Bronze Beast by Roshnik Chakshi. This is the third and final book in the Gilded Wolves series. And what to say? What to say, the Gilded Wolves follows this. Different characters that all come together, work together as a team, they do some heights. They're just our friends, family, lovers, and it overall just wrapped up here. I don't want to obviously spoil it, but after a long journey, after falling in love with these characters in a beautiful world and a beautiful writing that Roshni writes in, sad and nostalgic ending. I almost cried in the last few pages to be it. I think I thought it was beautiful, but a bit sad. And I really liked the journey. It's still all the clues and like the different stuff is still confusing to me because I'm not as smart as these characters. But I ended up really enjoying the whole series. Of course, it's very beautiful. And yay, four to five stars to this. Glad I finished it, but also sad. But now we will wait for more Washington Chalkshi. And it would be great. And yay, that was it for this wrap up. I hope I was a bit fast because I feel like I didn't talk that long. And I hope I just took some together, which was also helpful. So that was nice. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a bold emoji down below if you enjoyed this. You will see me soon in a new video. And yay, I hope you had a good reading month. If you did. If you didn't, it's fine. Goodbye. <laughs>